Hey friends, I'm Jess of Nourishing New Mamas and if you're pregnant, you are in the right place because today I'm gonna to be sharing my six tips to help you prepare for labor and delivery and help you have a more confident, less fearful, positive, natural birth. Now I'm sharing from my experience of an unmedicated labor, but I promise you these six tips really do apply no matter where and how you plan to give birth. So let's jump in. Number one, focus on your mentality towards birth. This is a huge one. How you view birth is going to be a really big difference in how you experience your birth process. Viewing birth as something your body was designed to do, something that is normal, something that is good, even when there's sensations you've never felt before, is going to color your experience with birth versus going in really fearful, really anxious, or thinking of it as a really negative thing. We've all seen the movies, okay? We all know how the media portrays birth. There's screaming, there's cussing. It's this terrible, chaotic thing, but it doesn't have to be that way. No matter how your birth plays out, going in with the mindset of trusting in faith rather than fear is going to allow you to make room to have more positive associations with birth, which will not only help you physically in labor, AKA not tensing during contractions, which we'll get to in a bit, but is also gonna allow you to have better positive associations while you're in labor and looking back on your labor experience. All right, number two, and a quick outfit change because full disclosure, I leaked in my last shirt. Welcome to new momhood. Number two, be very choosy about who you let in the room. Your energy and your perspective are not the only ones that matter. This comes to the care team as well as the people that you invite. Having practitioners and providers that believe in your body's ability to give birth and believe in the how and the why you choose to give birth is critical for you feeling supported and at peace while giving birth as opposed to feeling conflict or like you have to constantly advocate for yourself while giving birth, which quite frankly is the last thing you want to worry about when a contraction hits or when you're in transition. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're interviewing care. Now, if you are planning on a hospital birth, I know that this isn't always the case because you can't control which nurses are on shift while you go into labor, etc., which is even more important than communicating with your partner or even hiring someone like a doula that you get to know beforehand that you trust and that you like a lot so that you can lay out, hey, here's my desire for my birth. You know, like here's what I want, here's what I don't want that way when the time comes all you have to worry about is being present and intentional while giving birth and not having to advocate for that because you have people that you trust doing so now when it comes to the people that you invite there really are no rules right I know some women who are really motivated by having a lot of people there you know inviting lots of family lots of friends and cheering you know for, for them to cheer her on I was not that way I just wanted my husband and my midwives there. And even then my midwives would go in and out just to check on baby. But for the most part, a lot of my birth was just my husband and I. I know everyone wants to be there to meet that magical, you know, to see that magical moment when baby comes and it's this really beautiful thing. I get it, but that doesn't mean that you have to invite them. It can mean the difference of being at peace or feeling anxious or worried about other people while you give birth. So having someone that's really fearful of birth or that doesn't trust you know, the birth process can be really mentally difficult while you're in labor to have that, their energy there. Or if you're someone like me, I had people that I loved that were supported, but I knew myself and I knew that if they were in the room, I would be thinking, are they okay? Are they hungry? Are they bored? It's 3 a.m. Are they think, et cetera, et cetera. I knew myself and I knew that if there was anyone else but my husband in the room, I would be distracted. So if you're on the fence and you don't really know if you wanna invite this person or not, just think if you're not completely comfortable being undone in front of them, pooping, vomiting, groaning, all the like, they're probably not the person you want to invite to your birth. There are things we can't control in birth, but the people we invite into that space and the energy we allow there, we can control and can make a massive difference in how peaceful our experiences or supportive our experiences while we give birth. Three, 
find like-minded community. This is a big one. This is where, you know, positive birth stories, Facebook groups, connecting to other moms really is super helpful. When I was planning to have an unmedicated birth, I didn't know a lot of moms at the time that had had one. And I remember meeting a mom in church who had a home birth that was super amazing and super positive. And I just asked if I could sit down and pick her brain and she was really sweet. So she said, of course. And it was so helpful for me to be able to just ask questions, things that, you know, would keep me up like, well, what about this? And like, how do I do this in the tub? And all these random things that, you know, if you're pregnant, you know, you just start thinking about at night when you can't sleep because the baby's kicking. Having that conversation was so helpful for me. Watching positive birth stories so helpful for me because it allowed me to visualize the birth that I wanted to have, which really is half the battle getting there, right? It's perspective, it's mental, it's visualizing the birth you want to have. Don't underestimate that when it comes to preparing for labor. Four, educate yourself on the birth process. This is my favorite one because I find that even though birth is this thing that happens all the time and we all know about it and we've seen it in movies, et cetera, et cetera, most of us can't articulate what is actually happening in our bodies to give birth. Ignorance is a breeding ground for fear, I find. And so if we don't know what's happening in our body, especially when we go into labor and we're experiencing sensations we've never felt before and they're really intense, if we don't know what's actually going on, there is way too much potential for us to be really afraid, be very anxious, and feel very chaotic. Now, not only is this kind of a poo-poo on the whole positive natural birth thing, but it physically makes your body tense up. When you are fearful, when you are anxious, you tense your body. It's a natural physiological response. The problem is, is that tense in your body makes contractions infinitely more painful. The best thing for your body when you're going through contraction is to relax so that you can let the wave wash over you and let it do what it needs to do. It's gonna happen regardless. You tensing or relaxing is gonna make the difference for how tolerable, tolerable it is for your body. A couple books I love for this that really walk you through the happenings of birth, what a contraction is, what your uterus is doing, the stages of labor, etc., are Inamay's Guide to Childbirth and The Bradley Method. You don't have to follow The Bradley Method, but it's a great book for understanding the stages of labor, and I'll link them down below. I find that even if you don't love or nerd out on like, you know, the inner workings of your body, going into birth prepared because you know what's happening allows you to have more confidence in your body while you enter into the really difficult parts of labor like transition and pushing. Another reason why I'm such a big advocate for knowing the process of birth and studying up on it is because it allows you as a mama to be very active, you know, an active participant in your birth. Labor is really a dance between mom and baby. Yes, your baby knows how to be born, but your positioning, your movements can make a massive impact on how fast birth is and helping baby kind of maneuver through your pelvis. And so because I knew more about birth, when I heard my midwife say what station she was at, my daughter, I was able to know, okay, I need to make room at the bottom part of my pelvis because that's where she is. And so I knew to kind of flare my feet outwards, which helped with the bottom part of my pelvis, et cetera, et cetera. It's incredibly helpful and empowering to feel like an active participant in your birth. And you really can only do that if you know what's going on and how to respond. Five, prep your partner beforehand. This kind of goes off my last point, but as the best, as the best of your ability include the person that's gonna be there in on all the education, all the reading I'm talking about, practicing birth positions, include them in that. I would spend so much time reading and highlighting certain paragraphs of what I was reading and I would read it out loud to my husband. I'd ask him to practice birth positions with me. He would you know, hang out with me while I did my stretches at night. And this allowed for a much more team effort going into labor so that I knew I, it's not all on my shoulders. If I need him to help me in this position, if I am telling him, hey, walk me through this wave, we, he already knows what that means because we've already established a language around it. He knows what I'm talking about. I'm not having to explain to him how he can support me while I'm going through a contraction. We've already had that conversation. And so it's incredibly empowering for both parties to be actively involved in birth like that and then allows you to have an experience of birth that's not just solo, but really is a team effort and bonding all the way through. Number six. Big one, practice, practice, 
practice. When you're preparing for labor, you're gonna read a lot about, you know, breathing for labor, right? You know, breathing and relaxing, or if you're reading the Bradley Method book, you're gonna read a lot about relaxing every muscle in your body, relaxing your face, meditative breathing, a lot of these things that are designed to make birth much more enjoyable, less painful, all of those things that we want. Knowledge only gets you so far <laughs> if you haven't put it into practice. When you go into labor, you are not going to be putting in putting into play new things for your body, right? Your body's going to be going through, through something extremely intense. It's going to revert to what is familiar. And so if you're wanting to respond differently in birth, you know, you're having a natural birth or any birth and you want to be more relaxed, you want to relax your body through contractions, you want to push on all fours, practice these things beforehand and take it very seriously so that when you're in labor, your body will revert to what is familiar and you don't have to think about it because you practice it and it will be going through the motions that come a lot more naturally to you now. All in all, practicing these pain management techniques or any you know labor techniques while you're pregnant allows you to walk into birth feeling much more trusting and having much more faith in your body that it was designed to do this, that when the time comes, you can trust your instincts and just go through birth intuitively. All right, friends, I hope this video gave you some tangible tools to prepare for labor so you can have a positive birth experience. If you're pregnant, let me know in the comments which one stuck out to you. And if you're postpartum, let me know if there's any I left off the list. I'd love to learn, you know, for next time. If you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I make new videos every Wednesday on all things intentional, holistic nourishment with your mama design in mind.